This American engineer called Edward Murphy came up with this idea that to design something, you must assume that if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. That's what Murphy's Law is. My name's Robert Matthews, and for many years I was obsessed with Murphy's Law. And in 1996, I decided to look into Murphy's Law of Toast. So now, 30 years later, Entera Gemina, is that how you pronounce it? The probiotic brand, have asked me to try and disprove what I've already proven. They've asked me to design a piece of toast that tends to land butter side up. It's ridiculous. This is not gonna end well. People think that it's okay to eat food that has fallen on the floor, as long as that food has not been on the floor for longer than five seconds, the so-called five second rule. This is incorrect. As soon as food touches the floor, it can become contaminated with potentially harmful microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi. If I'm at home and I drop a biscuit on the floor, I'll probably eat it. Depends how long on the floor for. <laughs> like, five second rule on the floor. Um, but longer than that, no. I never do, my husband does though. He says it's the five second rule, and I hate that five second rule. I was just blowing it like, and just put it in my mouth. Sometimes I don't even want to kiss him. Ah! <laughs> Simply blowing the food is not sufficient to remove those organisms, but we can take probiotics to strengthen our gut microflora to prevent infection from occurring. It wouldn't matter what side it landed on. I'll still eat it. I don't care about the germs in my floor <laughs> because it's uh, pretty clean. If it falls on the non toasted one, whatever you put on, you can definitely grab it and just get eating. it. <laughs> okay, so as a piece of toast starts to slide off a table, it starts to break into a spin, okay? And the problem is that it doesn't spin fast enough to land butter side up before it hits the ground. This is expressed by this equation here, okay? That's why toast lands butter side down, okay? Because the angle through which it's spun is within those two limits. I did some experiments with real pieces of toast just to check, and I did that probably about a hundred times. But to really show that there's something in it, you have to do the mathematics. And I found that Murphy was right, that toast really does tend to land butter side down. When I published the paper in the scientific journal, I got a huge amount of media coverage. I mean, you know, in the British media, on the front page of Scientific American, TV companies, uh, film crews from Germany, Brazil, America. I got a call and they said, Robert, we want to give you the Ig Nobel Prize for Physics. I even got a letter from the chief scientific advisor to Her Majesty's government. So they were all just fascinated by it. If I dropped some food at home, would I eat it? Yes. When I was asked to come up with a solution to Murphy's Law of Toast, I thought, well, how am I going to do that? So I need to look at the equations again to see if there's something I can alter to make the toast land butter side up more often. Well, imagine that this is a piece of toast, right? As it slides off a table, maybe we can change how fast a piece of toast spins on the way down or how long it takes to hit the floor. But there are other factors as well, like friction and also aerodynamics. If it flies off, there'll be some effect that might keep it the right way up. I don't know. We're gonna have to do some research. My name is Nuno Garcia, and I have been a pastry chef and a baker for 20 years plus. I have been able to achieve many Michelin stars for some chefs. I've worked in London, um, New Zealand, Australia. To be honest, I've had many challenges in my career, but this was one of the biggest challenges. I didn't quite understand the physics of it, so I wasn't sure about 
if it was a matter of size or shape or um, ingredients. Okay, good morning everybody. We're here today to learn about the science of Murphy's Law of Toast. It's all about the angle at the end. We've got to find a way of either getting less rotation or more rotation. We've got to keep out of that zone. So there are three basic things we can do. First one is changing the height of the table. Well, the theory says if it drops from a greater height, it'll give the toast enough time to come all the way butter side up again. But to be honest, I think you've overdone it. Told you. So the second strategy we've got is going to be to try and do something about the size the shape of the toast. Welcome Brilliant. to the bakery. Yeah, it's like a laboratory here. Yeah, it is. We're going to make round ones, yeah. um, square, right. triangles. We can even try a boomerang effect. OK. <laughs> yeah, it's worth a try. Finally, we've got aerodynamics. Uh, is Robert, that... uh, one thing. You've spoken about length, but you never speak about mass. Does it make any difference? Yeah, it's a great question. So, no, it doesn't. And the reason is that when the toast leaves the table, it's under free fall. And so gravity no longer matters. And that's called the principle of equivalence, and it's a mystery of science. So aerodynamics, that means that as it goes over, it hardly spins at all. It basically flies off the table, and so it doesn't get into that Murphy zone because it hasn't spun at all. Okay, so I think this could work. So the basic idea is this quite short, okay? And it's quite thin. The hole could be quite important because it reduces a bit of friction. Think you can make it? I think so. Okay, great. I think it's got a chance. Yeah. Let's yeah. give it a go. Yeah. Well, 30 years ago, I used the laws of physics to show that there really was something in Murphy's Law of Toast. And now, I've used the laws of physics to find a design that tends to land butter side up. So, pretty pleased with that. <laughs>